Okay, in this video we're going to look at factoring by factoring out a greatest common factor here first. Now usually with factoring, there, there are several different types here, but factoring out a greatest common factor is the thing that we're supposed to always look for first, no matter how many terms I have, what the variables look like, and so forth. Now, really here when we look at factoring out a greatest common factor, all we're really doing is the distributive property sort of backwards. We're sort of undoing the distributive property. So let's take a look at a lot of these examples here. First one, 8x plus 10. So what I'm going to look at here is just look for a number here since the 10 doesn't have an x also, but a number that would go into 8 and 10 here would be 2. So 2 would be my GCF. So again, my greatest common factor, this is the value that's going to go the largest value that will go into both 8 and 10 will be 2. And, and let me do this instead. Let me write underneath. I think it's a little bit easier to understand that way. So we're going to factor out a 2. And now what we're basically doing is undistributing. So what would I multiply 2 by right here to get the 8x? Well, that would be 4x. Okay. And similarly here, 5 times what here would give me a 10 back and then that would 2 times 5 there would give me 10. So we have 2 times 4x plus 5. Okay. Now in our next example we're going to look at the case here where we can actually factor out more than just say a constant or a whole number. So let's notice in this part let's get beyond the 6 and the 8 which the greatest common factor would be 2 but let's notice our variables this time. They both have an h. In fact, the first one here has an h squared. So what we're going to do when it comes to the variables here is we can actually factor out the one with the lower exponent, which in this case would be like here, h to the first power. So we're going to be able to factor out an h this time. Now, let's go back to the 6 and the 8 smallest number here that would go into both 6 and 8 would be 2. So I'm going to be able to factor out a 2 and an h. Okay, so we're like undistributing in here. Now, let's think 2h times what right here would give me 6h squared. Well, 2 times 3 is 6. And then h times h would give me h squared. Now, same thing with the 8h here. I'm just going to bring down my minus sign. 2 times 4 is 8. Now, in this case, we don't need a h. See, 2h times 4 would be 8h. See, I've factored out the h, so it doesn't really have to go on that one. Now, let's look at the next one here. We've got x cubed minus 5x squared right there. So in this case, let's notice you don't really have a coefficient in front of x cubed. So in this case, it's really not so much a number that's going to factor out. There's really not a number that they have in common right here because this one doesn't even have a coefficient. Now, let's look at the variables. Though. Sometimes what you have, like in this case, the only thing you could factor out is variables. Now you have x cubed here for the first one and then an x squared for the second one. So recall here what we can factor out is the one with the lower exponent. So we can factor out this x squared there. So now let's think x squared times what would give me x cubed? Well x squared times x and then x squared times what here would give me 5x squared and well, that would be 5. Okay. So again, that would be the case of here where we would only factor out just a variable. Now let's look at one last example here. I'm going to rewrite that last one over here. Now this one does have three terms, but that really, that's really not going to change a lot here. We're still going to look for the biggest number that goes in each number. Now this time it just happens to be three right here. So with 8, 12, and 4, the biggest number that will factor out of those, or that will go into those, would be 4. So I'm going to be able to factor out a 4. Now, let's look at the variable. Recall, we can factor out the variable here 
that has the lowest power and so in this case this would be x. Okay, now let's see what we would multiply by here to get this back. So 4x times what would give me 8x cubed? Well that would be 2x squared. Okay, and then next here we have 4x times what would give me 12x squared? Well that would be 3x. And now finally, a lot of people in these particular types of problems here, I think I'm going to do one more example to point this out, think that, well, hey, I factored out the 4x so I don't have to do anything. But that's not true here. I've got to multiply 4x times something right here to get this 4x back. So 4x times what would give me 4x? Well, 4x times 1. And a lot, of, a lot of students here will leave off that 1 when they don't factor it and they get it wrong. Let me show you um, one other case here that's kind of similar. So we have, say, 5x squared minus 5. And this will be our last example. So we can probably definitely notice here that we can factor out a 5. Now, in this case, this one has an x squared, but this one does not have any sort of form of x. So I can't factor out an x because both of them don't have an x there. So all we can factor out is a 5. So 5 times, 5 times what would be 5x squared? Well, 5 times x squared would be 5x squared. And there again, I have to have some term to get this one. I can't, a lot of students will just do that. And that's incorrect because 5 times x squared is 5x squared, but you're not getting the minus 5 back right there. So we have to ask here, right, 5 times what right here would give me negative 5? Well, it would be negative 1. i got to have that 1 right there. Now, later on, we'll actually learn how to take this one a little bit further, but that's enough for now.